hello and welcome back to Thronebreaker. I accidentally walked into the village when I was about to start the episode, so... Meave shook her head in disbelief as she surveyed the landscape before her. The Neof Guardians had destroyed everything in their path. Burned farms, trampled fields, leveled orchards. The bastards, she hissed. They mean to cause the a famine. Yeah, so uh, I guess they're gonna leave us hungry. Uh, which is a little odd because... You would normally see the invading army actually looking for supplies, but maybe the New of Guardians are so prepared that they have a, such a good supply route set up that burning down uh, farms is actually a viable strategy. It's still odd because if you already have control of the region, you would definitely like to have a way to resupply. So it's very odd. When the Lyrians reached Braithwaite, a small village near Aldersburg, they saw gaunt men and women, more bone than flesh, gnawing on acorns and boot leather. The invaders had requisitioned every scrap of the village's food stores and hauled it off to their nearby camp. In strained voices, the villagers begged the Queen to help them retrieve their supplies. Milady, frost will come before we know it. They'll help us. Why not a soul and live to see the door? Yeah, I mean, again, it's a little conflicting, so it seems like, okay, so the Neil Guardians steal the supplies and they just burn down everything else, so yeah, they just want people to die at this point, but also they need the supplies, but yeah, they're just kind of stealing it, apparently. Uh, I don't know if you have the supplies to give you. Meave looked around at the blackened, scorched village, at the walking skeletons who dwelled in it. The suffocating smoke bellowing up from the fields sent tears streaming down her face. I'll do what I can. Was all she said. She knew this was not the time for a rousing speech. She needed to act. Oh, would you look at that? Who knows? Actually, actions kind of matters. This is this is actually the best way to tell. Uh, to uh, intentions of somebody is just like you know you don't pay attention to what they say. You pay attention to what they do, and that's super easy. That's the easiest way to tell uh, what someone is up to. Like that's it, you know. Just, just like, come on, just giving a political speech here that would be just super dumb. But yeah, like if I just start delivering food, but I'm a big jerk about it, like they're gonna love me. <laughs> like I'm not sure how you can be a big jerk about that, but like I don't know. We wouldn't have the social skills to really, I don't know. It's just delivering food would be great, you know. Alright, let's go. So these people are hungry. Milady, have mercy. We'll waste away and starve. Well the thing is, you guys are I totally understand your despair, but at the same time. Okay, I, I totally understand your despair, but yeah. I, I can't really blame them too much for being in shock. At this point I would probably be pissed. But, but would be useless, like, everything is burned down, I'm not sure if I can even find a fucking rabbit uh, to kill, so. But I might try, especially if I'm desperate. Not that I have to be desperate to eat rabbit, that sounds good. <gasps> Nymph Guardians! Well, that's super convenient! Hey guys, uh, do you mind sharing some the stuff? The Guardians reached the outer defenses of the camp where the Nilf Guardians had taken Braithwaite's food stores. Rayla delivered her report. Three heavy infantry regiments, the Zeri Arbalists, the warrior said. And I heard neighing, so they've cavalry as well. Meave said nothing, working it over in her head. The fate of the starving villagers weighed on her heart. But was it worth risking heavy losses to aid them? What? We can't leave New Guardians camps, like, uh, behind our back. We gotta take it out. This is, this is obviously uh, an attack because now we have an army and we have a manageable threat that's easy that's that's like attacking 101 is that you wanna take fights you can win and this is a fight we can win so this is obvious we gotta take this fight you know we won't be able to take a fight when the enemy army is five times our size or even two times our size it's, it's not gonna work but now we got a fort that we can actually set on fire uh, and 
laugh as they come out and we kill them. So this is good stuff. We're gonna attack the garrison. We're gonna pull back. The guardians keep food in storage and watch it rot while peasants perish from hunger. Will we allow this? The queen said, addressing her soldiers. No! no! Cried the soldiers. I didn't think so. Meave said with a smile as she drew her weapon. Lyrians, attack! Yeah, but like, how do we attack this? Because this is kind of like a fort, right? You know, you kind of you kind of making it sound like we're just gonna attack them in the open, but that's not exactly how it goes, like because now would I? I know I can think of like a hero's free battle. Uh, when we attack a castle, it's not exactly on that level, but like let's just go with that for now. Uh, it can be a fort. Still, it's not an obvious one because they're gonna be hiding inside, right? But then we're gonna have a battle in the open. Not like a... That the first row is like a wall or something like that. Short and battle? Now we're gonna whoop him. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright. Only one round. Oh! Never mind that! Holy crap! I'm proven wrong right away. Great! But that's not what we had last time. Okay, uh, not the Rivian Pikeman, so that's nice. Forced to is to duel each other. That could be okay. These are ridiculous. I'm not sure if we can. Yeah, we probably don't need two things to set on fire. What am I looking for here? I think black rail is a little better. How am I supposed to win? I guess that's what we have to find out. If I had access to more blitz units, that would be nice. I think at this point we're just gonna Today be okay with this. Shall taste imperial blood. If I can bust down the castle gate, then we would get very strong. But I think that's not really realistic. Now we're just gonna go leery incitement. We'll be reaping black clad heads. Oh. oh my god, what is this? Uh, ambassador. Strengthen all allies by one. Can you just do this all the time? Look like that. We can move the gate in the back? Maybe? No, it's... We can't move. My spirit's willing and how the... These damn boots are killing me. We can't move them. I just set the back row on fire. <laughs> We're good. Scrubbing oh, duty again? Oh, gods. This could hurt. No, oh, that's going to hurt. Believe me. <clears throat> Average right, two geez. damage per turn. That is going to hurt. Mm. Abolista, your command. Oh, we managed to hit the gates. Whatever. Okay, fine. Rivian oh, Regiment Lumixes Pikemans Order! I don't think he can win. I'm a monster. I'm probably gonna gonna blow up this the gate. Yeah, that's something randomly. That's pretty big. Oh, whenever an ally is destroyed, this unit loses 25% of its power. But still, you know, <clears throat> a 7-8 power new guardian commandant. That's that's okay. Again and again and again. That's not too bad, you know. I 
can kill that, but we don't have to right now. Oh, it actually went up in power. Oh, actually, I kind of fucked up. Wait, still have to do something else? Discipline shall bring us victory. One bolt. Fine. It's not really <laughs> perfect, but fine. Mm. We're gonna do a Lyrian Merlot at the end. Right to fire. Yes. I guess I I can't target that. The gate is almost blown up. All right, bring it on. Oh, pass. Because it's gonna be auto pass. Can we auto pass? Can't auto pass. We just we just gotta wait. I guess that Nilf Guardian Knight wasn't the the best. Your grace, the battle's won. We've secured the storehouse. Oh yeah! I think my my deck is just too good. Maybe there's a way to optimize it. I think we can have more blitz in it, maybe. But sometimes that just doesn't work because we have this uh, one round. Like I have, I had eight cards left. But if it's a free round battle, then I suppose I built it for free rounds, not one round. Neve managed to rout the Nilfgaardian too. troops and regain the stolen supplies. However, the Queen's good humor faded soon after the battle. Her soldiers began loudly demanding she not return to the village, but keep the food for her troops. We've nigh empty bellies too, my lady. Or whatever we give them, the black clad bastards will just steal right back. Better to strengthen our own army than the enemy's. That's a good point. There's doing half the supplies, keep the rest. I think that's uh an okay compromise. Um Good question. I think returning all the food to the village is the least likely option. I just, I suppose we have to think about how much, how much food are we talking about here? Is, is it a lot of food? Do we need it? Like, I would need information here because if I had some kind of a, a meter or like some kind of a, a stat that, you know, army food and it was like bare minimum. And like, okay, I know that the village needs food, but how much food we have, like, like, do we need to give back all the food they have that they have a chance? Like, for example, if like if we had just enough food that they can possibly survive the winter, then yeah, there's not much point giving back half because they're still gonna be dead. That's just kind of like a feel good move, unless they realistically have some other ways to actually procure food, uh, which not which might not be a thing. So again. So many things to consider. Of course, the simplest and the uh, option is just to give back all the food and keep going. But we might... Yeah, I don't know. We might still need the food ourselves as well. But of course, the argument can be said that, like... Uh, can be made that, you know, it's not our food, right? We didn't earn it. But we kind of fought for it, so... Uh, we might just do half-half here. Let's do half. I, I, sounds good to me. Like, ultimately, you got the food, they, they, they grew the food, but also they couldn't protect it and we kind of get it back. So I think that's, I think that's fair at this point. Um, so let's, let's see if that works. Easy it would have been to take offense at the soldier's words, to accuse him of greed. But his words held much merit. 
Meave's army had no less need for the food than the peasants, and in war-ravaged Edern there were few chances to replenish their supplies. After a moment's hesitation, the Queen announced her decision. We shall divide the food. Half we return to the peasants, half we keep for ourselves. Nice. That gives both groups a chance. It gives us enough to keep going and also gives the peasants possibly enough to get through the winter or uh, just until they can... I don't know. I don't know what they can do, but like that, that's obviously not hopeless scenario because they're gonna have some food. So that's it. Actually staying in this area, even if they have houses and whatnot, could be just a bad idea. They might be better off just using whatever food they have just to head for the nearest uh, uh, safe city. Alright, what else you guys got? I kind of feel good about this decision, but I don't exactly know uh, like how much food we had. Again, this information would be pretty important just to make an educated decision, not just like, hey, I, we, need, we need some more stuff. Right. At first, what the have. peasants were glad to see the soldiers, but their joy quickly turned to anger when they found Meave had decided to return only half the recovered supplies. And for a queen to stoop so low, so low, robbing good folk, starving good folk. Ugh. Meave refused to argue with the villagers. Yes, justice was on their side, but in times of war, justice counts for little. I know you're disappointed and you hope for more, but it's definitely a lot more than what you had before, which is nothing. I tried my best, okay? Also, I need to keep my soldiers happy. If... Because it's kind of silly to assume that, you know, people are just going to follow me around empty, with empty stomachs. Its ears, spooked for no visible cause. Trusting in animal instinct, Meave jumped to the ground and felt tremors under her boots. At first, they were faint, barely palpable. Then grew stronger and stronger. What's going on? Meave cried. Why does the earth tremble? Just to just to go back to the previous one, like if I don't keep the loyalty of my soldiers, then it, there's a good chance that soldiers gonna break off and start looting the villages. You know, they're just gonna desert because why wouldn't you? That's the only sensible thing to do. And then I will not have my army. The peasants will have th their food stolen by the deserters. <laughs> so I think this is the only sensible choice. Anyway, uh, yeah. Hey, what's up? Doom, doom. Before anyone could respond, a scout from the forward guard let out a terrified cry. A moment later, snap trees crashed down around them, and out of the woods came a 30-foot-tall stone giant. Gods, whispered the queen. What is that? A golem. Isbel whispered back. Favorite servant of Nilfgaardian mages. Ooh. Oh, nice. We found the new guardian mage, I guess. As if to confirm his words, soldiers marched out from behind the giant, clad in heavy black plate. Their leader, however, wore but a light tunic, and his hands glowed with a strange blue light. Dithen Quan and Lyrian! He shouted, giving the order to attack. Gloir and Ard Feyin! Okay. Can we just shoot down this uh, flimsy guy? Who doesn't even have armor on? Because that seems to be the main disadvantage of the mages, that they're like, Oh my god, I'm so, so cool with my magic that I don't even have to wear armor. Then you get shot in the head by a crossbow bolt, and... Uh, yeah. That's not gonna change your mind, because you're dead, but, you know. Kinda, kinda works. It's gonna be a proper battle now? Oh, it's a shortened battle. We can't eliminate the Albrecht. So, we don't have to do that, but we might, if we don't eliminate him, maybe he's gonna join us. Let's start battle. <laughs> Load last checkpoint? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, 
Um, two ways to set them on fire. Maybe take Florin. I think one straight bomber is gonna be enough. It's not the best. My spirit's willing and how but these damn boots are killing me. Okay. My powers are your Mom, break the mage's spell, and the golem's power will wane to naught. Every turn, from turn to start, damage the highest enemy unit by the power of the lowest unit in the opponent's hand. Okay. So that's a four. Well done. Maybe set them on fire. You match me. Don't shake that. This could hurt. Like that. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Punch them all. So he's gonna boost my lowest unit quite a bit. The mm, I can do Lyrian Sightman again. I. I want a base copy of that card. Is it optional to eliminate Albrecht? Actually, I, I suppose I can run out of units. That, that works too. Maybe we do Reavy and Pikeman. But then I'm gonna have so many units on the board. Two Arbalists. And punch him. I go up by seven, who cares? Albrick, you're weak. Uh, we can't play the regiment drummer before the Rivian Pikeman. I'm a well set. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Okay. Yeah, we can't play that right now. Lyria! I don't want to kill you, Albrecht. You're just gonna die to a random fire. Oh, Lyrian Lummoxes. One bolt I need. I have to pass. He, he's dead. Your grace, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> he was so bad. He died to the random fire. Oh man. Raising her shield against the whistling rain of arrows, Meave fought her way towards the Nilfgaardian mage leading the attack. At close quarters, Magic Arcana would stand no chance against a well swung blade. Yeah! Meave roared, delivering a powerful blow. Her blade severed the mage's aorta, and drowning in his own blood, he fell to the ground. But he choked out by way of last <laughs> words. Then the blue aura coming from his hands flickered out, and the stone giant thundered to the ground in pieces. Well, Albrecht, I would have loved the chance to uh, hire you, but 
Maybe we only managed to uh, skip the boring conversation with you after the fight. Also, I really love that recap of that, uh... <laughs> how it happened. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Like, me just rushed in, close range, took out Albrecht. Easy. That's how it happened. We're all gonna confirm it. That's exactly how it happened. When the dust of the battle had settled. The Queen ordered her men to search the Nilfgaardian camp. In the Mage's tent, they found a rare instrument used to communicate at a distance. A megascope. megascope. The crystals encrusted in its brass frame were still warm, meaning it had recently been used to conduct a conversation. The burning question was, with whom? Isbel! Yelled the queen. The mage dutifully came closer. This device, could you activate it? Yes, your grace. But are you sure? I am. Get to work. Isbel nodded, then began calibrating the magic device. All right. I'll right, just make a call. Maybe we can order a pizza. Finally, something clicked. A light flickered on. And before Meave's eyes appeared the outline of a Nilfgaardian general. Yeah, I killed your boy. Um... Um. Ah, uh, shit. Hey, yeah, hey, it's it's me, your boy Albrecht. Maybe he doesn't know. He kind of looked like a <coughs> well, that Albrecht guy, just dressed like a woman anyway. So maybe we t totally fooled him. Speak common, please. I know not your tongue. Oh, forgive me. I thought I spoke to someone else. Well. So, how much is the... How much is our good pizza around here? <laughs> What's up with, this, with those thingies around your neck? That looks ridiculous. Good to see you in good health, Queen. Or ex-Queen, I suppose, would be the more apt title. I like ex-Queen. That, that sounds pretty good. I, I can just join the X-Men franchise with that. Ex-Queen. Instead of fretting so much over my title, give yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is this sword part of him? I don't think that's part of him. That's just in the background. But it kind of sounds. Like, it kind of looks like it's it's on his hilt. But no. Um. Yep. Who's you? Who are you? Of course. Where are my manners? Duke Adel Ebdahi. Oh God. Grand damn it. Chancellor, Commander of Army Group East. Whoa! 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 What? Duke Ardal Epdahi, Grand Chancellor, Commander of Army Group East. You sounds like you're just uh, come on, you're trying to uh, come up as like someone uh, just an important guy, like some big wig. Why not just say, hey, I'm I'm Dahi or whatever, or Chancy. Hey, I'm the Grand Chancy. I could I could go with that, you know. Commander of Army Group East. But, but, but I'm do I'm glad that you just told me everything. <clears throat> so. I believe you've heard of me. I have? Sorry, I, I'd never heard of you, so. No such luck. Nope, can't say I have. No. This is the first time I hear the name Ardle. Ardle <laughs> I see you've a poor mind for names. <laughs> Perhaps you should ask your son. He knows me very well. What? Explain yourself. You Horson. Oh no. You are my boy? <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? You're not on good terms, are you? No, he kind of dresses like a slut and uh, <clears throat> also kind of betrayed me. I'm gonna go back and like take back my crown. Then I'm gonna give him the, the biggest whooping. I'm probably gonna l lock him up for like, uh, I don't know, like a few years. Such a sad story. But don't worry, it will soon be over. W how so? Is that a threat? <laughs> no. A simple prediction. Okay. Enough of this. Why use this megascope? What is it you want? 
I'm just wondering about the extent of this service. Uh, <gasps> uh, <clears throat> why use this megascope? I was kind of hoping that you're gonna put on like some kind of a strip show. Because those clothes are ridiculous. You know? I thought we were gonna have some fun here. Is that what is that what I want? <clears throat> Maybe. I've not decided yet. I just decided to give uh just just die the last caller that this golem guy called. Uh that apparently is dead now. And have you heard how I killed him? Like I just rushed him and like um uh, apparently like I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I killed him. I kinda forget about it. But it was pretty heroic. Uh, <clears throat> I, I can assure you about that. I want to see the man who's Who's butch butchering Edurn? To tell you I shall never surrender? Oh, come on. That, that just makes you such a small fish. It's like, ooh, I'm gonna get you. Curiosity, my only reason. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, but that's it. I, I didn't know who's gonna pick up the phone. Nor I care about uh, just telling you that, oh my god, I'm gonna get you. No, no, no. I, I just, I'm just curious who's gonna, who's on the other side. I was simply curious. Wondered whom the mage had contacted. Yeah. Curious. Oh, fascinating. You northerners are so primitive. Like mindless magpies taking anything that shines back to their nest. Your thirst for knowledge now quenched, please allow me to see to my duties. No, no, no. Let me just gonna chat. I'm just gonna hit you up from time to time. Hope you don't mind that. Farewell, your majesty. Or rather, till next time. For Ooh. there will be a next time, I assure you. For well, there will be a next time, I assure you. This is what I would like to say back to him. <laughs> <laughs> a quiet fell over the tent. The queen stepped outside, squinted her eyes against the glare of the burning fields, and swore to herself that when she did see Grand Chancellor Ardal Epdahi again, he would be a whole head shorter. Oh, nice. Alter Thunder! Yeah! Oh, we can get some... Um... I don't know, wooden... And gold. That's the only thing we care about. Oh my god, we can't go that way? Why? Maybe if he kept a guy, he could have built us a bridge? Or I don't know, I have no idea. Or maybe we were never supposed to go that way. We're getting- we're progressing toward the main quest. And I'm pretty sure this bridge was not passable. Yeah. I think we should be there pretty damn soon. Anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.